Okay. So, uh, yeah, then that game where I beat Brian and this Gandy was on Sunday. And then the following Tuesday, I, was, I played him again at the Denver Chess Club. And uh, because he failed and he did not win in this, he played it again, which I assume he's going to just keep doing until he beats me. And this time, instead of knight f6, he opted for queen d5. And he played this this line, which I I would say I know the least amount of shit in. It's because it's like, I don't think people really have played it against me ever. It's, it's always this or this, it seems like. So I just played d4, it just seemed like what, what to do. Knight f6, knight f3. And he played a6. Um, and I vaguely remember, like, okay, a6 makes sense that it would maybe be preparing b5. And my thinking was, well, if he's going to play b5, I'd like to put a bishop on that diagonal before he can. So I played bishop d3, so after b5, I can play knight e4, it takes in bishop, d bishop e4, and its bishop is a monster. Um, but it's better to just play g3 and do it this way, which I didn't really consider. So the next time I will do that, but bishop d3 is a fine move. Uh, and then he plays bishop g4. Which is like, if you think about it, bishop g4 doesn't really align with a6 at all. Why was a6 played if you're going to play bishop g4? It doesn't make sense. Um, so apparently, I should play h3, bishop h5, and just castle. And I'm doing well here, because he's probably going to have to play c6 anyway. Because a6 didn't help. Okay. But I, uh, I just kept going with my little plan. Um, and... This bishop is very good. So the problem is that, for some reason, the best move here is f5. Like, is that just me, or is, does that not make- I don't get it. The lol. Brian while doing his best to, Scandi to make the Scandi like a forced loss. Ooh, thanks for the raid, Chess Dojo. I am looking at a chess game I played against the Brian Wall. I've, I've, uh... Brian has not been having a good time against me lately. But okay, I take, and he plays e6, and, you know, obviously bishop b7 is not good because of queen b4 check, so that is, that is why I did not do that. I just castled. Um, I guess c3 is, was good there, but I don't know, I don't think there's anything really wrong with castling. But yeah, this is why a6 makes no sense. He has to play c6 later on anyway. It was just a waste of a move, especially when putting the bishop on g4. So I decided that because I am ahead in development and his king's in the center, I can afford to take some space in the center. It just made sense to me. Um, he plays knight d7. I play queen b3. I'm stepping out of the pin, and I am putting pressure on the b-pawn. Um, I'm also maybe thinking about playing d5. But, uh, yeah. So he plays queen to c7, just defending the pawn. And, uh, I thought for a while here... The line I saw was knight e5 takes. Taking would, would be quite bad, I think, because... Well, I just take on b7, you don't have time to take here. And, so it's not... You can't really afford to take that. Um, and I thought in this position, I thought I thought bishop c5 seemed forced, because if he doesn't, I play bishop b3, and then his dark squares are falling apart, and then where is he gonna put his bishop just here? So this is about how far I looked. I went here, and then I, I saw queen g3. Um, and I thought, okay, in this position, he can't play bishop e2 because of rook e1 and queen c3. And now both of these, he's gonna lose a piece, right? But then he played f5, which I didn't consider. And he thought he was winning here. He thought f5 was just a winning move. And, uh, yeah, he's like, a, he's, he's a little better. But, um, I thought for a long time here. And it's, so it's, it's probably, it's, it's technically the best move to take and play something like that. Um, and I thought about doing that, but, I mean, that's just, that's just kind of a miserable game. Because I have to take with the h-pawn, because this is pinned. I mean, I could throw that check in if I wanted to. Um, but now his bishops are great, and mine are, like, clumsy and my rooks are it's hard to find good squares for my rooks my pawn structure is a little weird so it's his i don't know how to evaluate this but it feels like i'm worse i don't know it just it just feels like something i don't want to go into so i decided that practically it made more sense to just play bishop c2 and uh just just you know 
keep keep pieces on the board and s somehow try and uh, I don't know, do something. I guess maybe play, maybe play like something like that or. I'm not sure, but yeah, f5 was a very good move, but it wasn't winning. So then, then he played bishop e2, and like I said earlier, this move doesn't- I didn't think this move worked at all because of rook e1, queen c3, and that was my whole idea when I went into this. But then he just played into it, and I was very confused. So okay, first we can look at queen b6. This move loses to this. I play king f1, um, and if he takes this rook, I take, and he's gonna get mated in some way or another. So that would be losing, so he can't defend it that way, and that only leaves b5, defending this way. Okay, I don't have to think much here, I play b3, and uh, maybe queen b6 here, and I told him after the game I thought this is what he was going to do, because... You know, in this position, yeah, so I'm actually doing fine here if I go to h1. Think. I didn't realize that in the game. I thought I, I looked at this position and I saw that I had to take with the queen, and he has queen queen d4, and I thought this looked pretty bad. I thought I was probably losing, but if I play king h1, then uh, this isn't going to be check, so it's not that big of a deal. I, yeah, and since this isn't a check, I just move the bishop, and that defends this. So I think I would have seen that if it had gotten to this position, but. Um, at, in the moment during the game, I didn't see that. I was afraid of queen b6. But then he castled queenside, which does make some sense because, okay, he's, this is this is his idea. And if we remember from the game we just looked at in the night orb where I was playing in NM, where, you know, I had the opportunity to stack on c3 and I wanted to, but I got scared. That game is why I won this game, I think. Because... My intuition was screaming at me to just take this and, and go into this, um, and I did check it for a while. But yeah, I I, had, I decided to, to to just do it because it just looked good to me, and I didn't see a reason why I shouldn't do it. Because after Bishop D4, I have this very nice Queen B3, which he said he missed. Queen B3 I think is super accurate because now I'm looking at the E6 pawn. So after takes, I have this move, and I'm I'm just I'm doing great here. His his pawn structure is in shambles. And, um, this bishop sucks, and, uh, you know, I, I have a few plans I can, I can go for here. So, what would you play here? Or would you put, the, would you push the bishop on a3 or g5? I want to know. I was having a lot of trouble deciding where the bishop should go. One is good, one is bad. Yeah, bishop g5 looks natural, and, like, it might just... Uh, win the material back. But yeah, the bishop would be nice on d6. My thought exactly. Um, so we'll look at the two positions and then we'll we'll try and evaluate them. All right, so here he, I guess he has to put bishop d4 and I take, I take, I have this. And something like this might arise. Okay, it's opposite colored bishops um, and I am up a pawn, but I don't know, my back rank is loose and uh, is just odd. So how would we evaluate this? Okay, draw is correct. This is completely equal. It's opposite colored bishops. That's what I thought. And listen, I wanted to win. <laughs> I'm not winning, but I wanted to. So I didn't want to just go into like a, a draw line. So I decided to play bishop a3, which is a bad move, but I didn't really understand why until after the game had ended. Um, okay, so bishop a3 looks good, right? Because bishop d4 is forced. It's the more forcing option. Bishop d4. Now I play bishop d6. And I, I thought he was probably going to take here. And um, from afar, when I looked at this position, I thought I was doing just fine. Um, queen c5, I did not look at though. Queen c5 is a really annoying move. I might have queen f3 here, and this looks messy, but I thought I might be doing okay here. Unfortunately, king b7 is a move. If he doesn't have king b if he goes something like, like king d7, which seems like it makes some sense too, then, I mean, this is also pretty equal. But I think, I think again, it's sort of like in that other game. 
I felt like if I have to win the exchange back, like, I just sacked the exchange. I don't want it back. If I have to have equal material, I want him to be the one to do it. I don't want to be the, the, the asshole who just wins my material back like a bitch. I don't want to do that. So, okay, I played bishop d6, and then he immediately made a bad move, so worked out. Um, what, now I have queen e6 check, and I take this pawn. So, okay, so he, here is position. I should just play something like rook c1. Just step out of this nonsense. Look at the c pawn. I'm doing fine. But I thought that queen takes f5, f5 I was winning because how do you defend this? I mean, you, you can't build up the attack anymore because of this bishop. And I'm, I have all sorts of little threats. So, black to play and not lose. Brian thought a really long time here, and he was grunting a lot. He, he kind of had a moment, sort of like I did, where, you, you know, you just think for a really long time, and uh, you start seeing ghosts, I guess. And then you make a very passive move. Your position is built around your bishop guarding the f8 square. Yeah. Well, I mean, my bishop is clearly- my dark square bishop is clearly my best piece. So, yeah, bishop c5 would make a lot of sense, because you're just taking my best piece. And I didn't think this- I didn't really think about this that much, because I thought- I thought this would be fine. Or like, yeah, I don't- I don't have- I can't do this, because I take and now he's gonna have this move. So I can't defend my pawn, that's the problem. Um, I don't think either of us realized that he was winning this pawn as well. I think we just sort of uh, didn't calculate, but just kind of looked at it, seeing the pawn here, and thought I was doing well there. But I, I have to play this this move. And, and now when he takes... I mean, I'm just down in exchange for nothing. Maybe, maybe some miracle I can hold this position, but... It's gonna be quite the uphill battle. I do get to take this pawn. It, maybe I'll draw. I don't know. I feel like I'll lose with both sides. It looks difficult. If he can trade queens, then he's probably just winning. I mean, this is just like the- I, we both have to play so accurately. I'm, I'm sure there would be like a hundred blunders if he went into this. Okay, but uh, he thought for a long time and then made a bit of a- he had his, a, a senior moment, and um, he played a uh, king a8, very strong. Now I am winning, because I have bishop e4, and now my bishops are, are just absolute monsters. Everything is just perfectly placed. I could play rook c1, build up the pressure here. It's just, it's just terrible. And then he thought for a long time again, and uh, he played this move, because he just doesn't know what to do. But to be fair, it's not easy to find a move. I think what he has- I think he actually has to do this, and uh, if he has to do this, then he's just losing, so. Yeah, not finding bishop c5 is, uh, lethal. But okay, he plays king a7, I play rook c1, and uh, yeah, that's not the way to defend, but sure, it's hard to find a move. It's nice bishops. Um, so I played queen f7 without thinking that much, it just seemed like the right move to make. And uh, at first, my intention was to play bishop c7 because the queen is about trapped, but he has a very annoying rook f8 move. Um, so I decided to play a4, which is the best move, and uh, his king is about to get checkmated. It's not really anything he can do about it. He decides to take the rook, or take the bishop finally, but that is where his rook will stay for the rest of the game. I take on b5, and uh, he needs to take with the queen, but he took with... Or he, he moved the king, and this just leads to checkmate. I don't think he saw this retreat. Queen a2, and here he he re, he resigned here, I think. I don't know. I don't remember if he played till mate or not. I don't think he did. So, that was uh, that was that game. That rook, that rook stayed there. I didn't even recapture it. Mm -hmm.